All right. Well, welcome to the hero's journey, uh, facilitating inner growth uh, with uh, nature-based learning education. Uh, I After I made that title, I, I was re really excited about it. And then afterwards, like for three days, I just was sweating. Like, how am I going to make this relevant? And, and I wonder why people are doing it. Are they coming for the hero's journey? Are they coming for nature? And so anyway, uh, I hope, uh, hope I can... Uh, help some of you out here, uh, out in the, out in the trenches, as they say, uh, working with kids, working with teachers to support you all. Um, so I'm Ricardo, uh, Sierra, I'm the director of the Hawk Circle Wilderness Education Program, and that's been going since 1989. And I've also started this year, la well, last year, I guess, um, this, uh, program that I call the Forest Educator Initiative. And it consists of a podcast and a uh, for 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 forest educators. So it's a very specific targeted podcast. And I've also got a, a product called the Forest Box for Kids, which is a craft and activity and nature journal based uh, subscription box for kids. Uh, and I also am doing um, the forest educator trainings as well. And so basically. I, I kind of figured all three of those would be really helpful because I could be in touch with a lot of people and find out what they're looking for on the podcast and communicate with what's working out there and then adapt that to create the best possible trainings over time. Um, I'm based in upstate New York and uh, we are in early spring here kind of it was snowing and raining just a minute ago, so I don't know how spring-like it is. But uh, anyway, I'm going to jump right in and uh, start our, I'm going to share my screen and let you all kind of see this little presentation that I made and see what we can do. But again, if anybody has any questions or comments, jump right in. And if there's any technical questions, please feel free to jump into. Ricardo, uh, Elijah Waits, he wanted me to tell you that he loves your forest boxes. So oh, I awesome. To, I put it on the chat, but I wanted to let you know that. Oh, man, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for telling me that. It makes my, that makes my night. Uh, cool. That's the whole point of doing it, right? Is that if it's not helping the, the, the kids and they're ha having fun, then what's the point? Okay, let's see. This, I think this is my last slide so let me go up here to the first one and click that here all right okay so hopefully everybody can see the screen and this is uh obviously the flyer for this uh program so i just kind of threw that on as our our first step in um and uh let's see this is me ricardo sierra i just kind of covered the forest educator initiative and I wanted to just talk for a minute about the hero's journey. And I, I wanted to ask, do any of you have a, a little familiarity with Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey already? Does it, have you heard of it before, thought about it? Okay, I'm seeing some people nod, so that's good. Uh, and yeah, if you don't jump in, that's okay too. Uh, but I would say right now, the, the hero's journey is a pretty cool um, experience uh, because it really models um, and talks about initiations, the power of initiations. And uh, Joseph Campbell, I think, was one of the first people that really kind of documented this. And he did a lot of comparative religious study and myth and comparative mythology to try to find common threads between you know religions all over the world. And he talked about these stages of initiation where you go, you have that call to adventure, and then you pass over into the, you know, the threshold of entering into a the different world and having some kind of, uh, you know, trial or challenge or experience that in a way shatters your, your way of seeing the world and, or stops your world a little bit. And then uh, in that, which you have to then learn how to manage your fear and find 
helpers and guides and mentors, and then ideally get on the other side of that and then return back to your community, to your everyday life and integrate what you've learned and so forth. And yeah, that's, that's probably it in a nutshell. I know that there's a lot of, um, uh, the hero's journey can also be um, expressed by people who are writers where they talk about the character arc and there's a, you know, you can look up and there's some of them are like, there's 25 stages of a, of a hero or whatever. And the heroic art arc with redemption and all these other things added. And so if you want to go down that rabbit hole, totally go for it. It's pretty fun and interesting. Um, but the reason that uh, I wanted to share this was that, um, you know, when we think of the hero's journey, uh, you know, and we think about that, like we're almost everyone on the planet is going through initiations of one kind or another. We're going through that all the time. So especially for children, they're, they're doing a lot of things that are brand new. They've never done before. And they are also growing. So they're growing and their bodies are changing. Like within six months, they're, you know, they're different. And so children are going through this, um, a, a tremendous amount of change and they're developmentally, they're going through that change. They're learning, they're expressing themselves. And so they're particularly, um, you know, it's very, very apparent when they're going through that because they are, they're just in it. You know, one minute they're like with their circle of friends and all of a sudden they have a problem and all of a sudden there's, they're not, they don't have any friends and they're just like, oh no. And it's like a big initiation of what do I do if my best friend, you know, bails on me or what do I do if my boyfriend or my girlfriend, you know, something happens or um, what happens if I have to go to summer school? Like there's all these things that are brand new that really shatter their world or change their world or give them an opportunity to enter into it, the unknown. And so <clears throat> those initiations are really there, but oftentimes we're not really aware of them. And <clears throat> my, my experience, I've seen um, children and one of the mistakes that I've found in a lot of my uh, wilderness education program is that I'll have a lot of staff with me and the staff kind of look at the children, especially younger staff, they kind of look at the kids as these are kids and they they don't really see them as individuals going through a lot of stuff. They just kind of see them as these are kids, these are blank slates, and I can just throw some skills out at them and I can throw some facts about Robins and I can take them on a hike and, and they'll just go crazy and have a great time. And for the most part, that's true. Um, however, uh, <clears throat> that the it's helpful sometimes to realize that uh, children, especially the youngest children, really live in a more mythological and emotional world and imaginative world than they do in the intellectual world. And so that's just one of the foundations to um, this whole kind of talk that I'm presenting here right now, my I, idea that I'm sharing. So for them, uh, a stick or a, a rock or whatever it is, like these all have mythological or archetypal meaning for them. And anybody that works with kids, you know that if a kid finds a stick, it's not just a stick. It's like their special stick. It's like a, it's their helper. It's their sword. It's their, their wizard staff or their wand or whatever it is. Like all these things that are around them and in their life um, take on a mythological type of meaning. And if you have children and you know, like, oh, my daughter or my son has this favorite blankie or has his favorite pillow or something like that, like that is, you know, beware of treating that blanket as just a regular blanket and just going here, use this one, because that will not fly as you know. Um, or if you throw out their favorite stick or, you know, whatever, you just, in your mind, you're going like, I don't live in that world all the time, but they are. And so when we're doing our programs, this is something that I hope uh, people are really aware of. Uh, any questions or thoughts, feel free to jump in. Uh, that reminds me of, uh, I work with uh, kids. I work with, uh, as a teacher coach for preschoolers. So there's probably uh, 160 preschoolers I work with. 
right? Going in and out of the classes. And I, I know that that world. And uh, I, we have this friendship and play that forms easily because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm that kid. I'm out there um, playing with them and, and getting down on their level and playing those games. And uh, when I see uh, your, your point to them, a stick is a wand, a sword and a staff. And um, there's that imaginative world. And then there's where it can go further. And it, it, there are limits to it. Like when things working in a public school when things are like a sword or a staff, it like right. they don't have access to that. And there's some kids who really need that. Actually, you need to be able to use a sick like a sword. Right. In a way, like bang it on something like, you know, and I I know like certain kids that are kind of like uh, some of the ones who struggle to fit within the parameters of just like you can you can imagine you could build blocks and you can play in this little sandbox area. But sometimes you need to be able to hold the staff and and, and walk with that. And um, yeah. yeah, so it reminds, I, I love, I love what you're saying and I, and I see it. And um, part of the reason I'm even here is like, just to continue the inspiration and how I can bring this um, even just a little bit closer to, to, um, to the kids that I'm working with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad to hear what you're seeing out there because that is true. And um, you know, I, I remember one time we were walking with a bunch of kids and they were, I think they were like nine or something, maybe, and maybe there were some younger, maybe five-year-olds and, you know, one boy picked up this really nice stick. I don't really know what was defining it that made it nice, but I could see the five-year-old and a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. They all were just like almost crying. Like I want a good stick. And they were just like, they felt like this incredible loss in like the span of like 30 seconds. And there was nothing else. There's no, there's no bullying. There's not, it was just, we we're all having a nice walk. And suddenly they didn't have something and the older kid did. And, you know, it just was like a, a interesting process because over the next like 10 minutes, I was like, well, maybe we'll find another stick. We, we are in the woods. Like, and next thing you know, they found their own stick and we kind of talked about why each one was special. And it was it was definitely a an experience of me having to enter their world. You know, they, they really could care less about anything that I was teaching them. They really just all needed a stick. So it was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, the other thing I'm gonna mention too is that uh, for children, because they don't have a very big cushion of, of like life experience to draw on when they go through a change or when something unexpected happens in their world, it is uh, it is like a magnified event for them. And so I, I don't mean that necessarily, it's not necessarily all bad, but like if something, if something that bothers them happens, it just like takes over everything, their consciousness. And they're just like, I don't know how to deal with this. And it, and it just stops them in their tracks. On the other side of it can be positive. You know, suddenly they're like, oh no, I guess it's my birthday and everybody's here and they're here for me. And I'm like celebrating. But it's a, those are why, that's why like a birthday for a young kid is like really, it's a really impactful thing for them. And I don't know, it's a, it's it's interesting because a lot of adults, uh, like I, I in my experience, there are some teachers like Octavio, like you, who really get it. And then there's a lot of teachers uh, that I've seen in, in schools where they're oblivious or they just don't care. And so they're just like, yeah, well, today's another day, your birthday, whatever. And they don't realize what kind of crushing blow they're giving or whatever it is. So anyway, the bottom line is it's kind of an interesting, it's an interesting experience. So, so one of the reasons I was going to try to talk about this is to go, well, well, why, why do we care? What, what is it? What purpose does it serve for us to understand this? And, you know, to some degree, it may not, if your program is doing something very, very specific in nature, you may not have time to kind of incorporate this. But if you have flexibility, there's some things that you could consider. 
And one of them is the fact that for a lot of children and, and adults, this does apply for adults as well, when we're going through initiations, oftentimes we're doing it alone. And we might have one friend, you know, you have your BFF or something or your bestie and they're like, oh, you're going through a breakup or, oh, you're maybe thinking of closing, you know, switching jobs. And they'll be like, we're going to go to Applebee's and we're going to get some tequila and we're going to, I'm going to be there to support you. And, and it's nice when somebody supports you. Uh, but for a lot of children, teenagers and so forth. They oftentimes, especially as they get older, they tend to hold that in, that whatever's going on for them, they kind of hold it in and they don't really want to share it. They don't want it to, they don't want to appear weak. And they're kind of acutely aware that there are a lot of eyes and there's a lot of group dynamics going on for them. And so when we talk about like going into the woods or going into nature um, and we are encountering these challenges or these uh, adventures or having these sort of mythic quests, uh, no matter what the each children child is like going through, oftentimes a good amount of that can apply to whatever's going on in their life. And so then they can kind of join in and help themselves reenact whatever's going on in a way and hopefully find a way to manage their fear, hear some stories, know that they're not alone, and and it's a it's a very very comforting thing to kind of let them come together and also be in the presence of an adult who actually is hopefully maybe seeing them and seeing all the things that they're that they're handling or or dealing with so that's that's a big part of this is that they you're we're actually allowing them you know space to hopefully feel seen and then um support their growth moving forward. So I'm going to send uh, all of you this PDF of this. So if you can't, if you can't read all this, that's okay. Um, but one, what I really wanted to say about this quote is that, you know, how we, how we frame our program is we can frame it in a way that will indicate to children in a kind of a subtle way that we understand not only the daily ordinary world, but the underworld or the unseen world or the unknown world. And which sometimes when you, when you're in that initiation, you're usually on your way down or on the way coming out of that underworld where it's a little scary or terrifying. And it's, oh, there's a lot going on. You're not, nothing's really certain. And it's also full of promise. Like in, in addition to the scary things, there's also things that you can get, you know, it's like, in a video game or something, you're like, oh, I'm going down into the deep part of the castle. And yeah, I might get eaten by uh, something, whatever, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, monster, but I also might find a magic spell that'll heal the kingdom or uh, a magical potion or a sword or a uh, something. So, so the idea here is that it's, it's filled with both of those uh, possibilities. And if we can just indicate to children in our program that we understand that without having to come out and go, hey, there's an unseen world and, you know, do this in a real, a, you know, I don't know how to say that, like a, in an overt way, then, you know, then it, it makes it less weird. And it also lets them kind of choose to kind of like get a little closer and let, they'll let you know that they're into it that they're, that they're on board, that they're on the bus. If that, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, is that ringing true for any of you or any thoughts? All right. So we'll keep going. Uh, Ricardo, can yeah. I, I wanted to touch back on, on, on that when you said bringing thoughts and I didn't want to lose that moment. And with, yeah. when you're talking about that unseen world, um, I, I may have shared the story because I, I know you uh, personally. Um, and, and if I did, it might hold value. But uh, I remember working at a 4-H camp one summer and we taught survival skills to, to some kids every day, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We covered a different skill on Friday. We all hiked out 
and whoever was in that class, we went to each cabin. We're like, all right, who's in the survival class? We're going to go out. And we're sleeping in this area where there are, there are bears, there are rattlesnakes and up in North Jersey, right? And um, so there's like that part of the adventure. But uh, we had created this beautiful camp and we're out there and we have this uh, like Thanksgiving ceremony for the week where every kid speaks their piece and adds a log to the fire and it grows and it grows. And actually they um, built the fire with a giant um, fire kit all together. So there was that element to it and there we are like just sitting quiet super black sky dotted with like millions of stars and surrounded by these huge hemlocks and uh, white pine and um there a kid was like I, he I, I carry this memory because it was so striking to me he's asking everyone he's looking around and saying do you feel it do you feel this do you feel it and like that that stays right. with me like he would and he was just so like impassioned as he's saying that, like, is anyone else seeing this? And yeah, it reminds me of that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. It's, uh, you know, I mean, the, you know, when you, when you do, when you go through the process of everything that you did in that camp where you're like building a shelter, making a camp, making a campfire pit, you're, you're getting a lot of buy-in and everyone's invested. And so then they're, they're all invested in, creating a magical experience versus and and kind of helping that to happen as opposed to you know getting involved in like petty drama that you could get at a camp or something and and so that's one of the uh, the powers of of us as a staff as or as a you know directors or you know educators is that if we see the world as filled with um possibility and magic and unknown and we see that there are these trials and tribulations that that we're all going through. Um, it, it really validates them because they're they're experiencing it. They don't really have any choice to, as far as how they experience it. They can either just completely numb out, or they can like live in their world. And and numbing out, that's when you see the kind of the light going out of their eyes, in uh, you know in your in your child or whether you're a parent or teachers or whatever. And so um, when one of the reasons that I would say the value of this is that if you actually connect with this world and where and the and the children get that you're connecting with them, um, it's a it's a very powerful bonding. Like there's a good chance that that kid, that kid that if you know, if they have the opportunity, they will continue to come to your programs for many, many years if they had the if they have the choice and the opportunity because they they know how they felt in an environment that you helped create and it felt really good to for them and very validating so um you know we're not doing it solely for that because we want them to apply that to everything in their lives but that is a side effect that sometimes happens so uh, one of the ways that um, this starts to happen for us is that you know when you look at a child and they see a tree, like sometimes I'm taking students out. And of course, you know, maybe they're, I primarily worked a lot with like 12, uh, 10 to 16 year olds. And, you know, when I would take those kids out on a hike, all of those kids for the most part had seen trees, seen big trees, seen other things. And, uh, you know, they didn't, you know, they kind of were like, yeah, yes, it's the woods. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, there's a nice view. Like they saw it, but they didn't really see it. And, you know, stopping their world, kind of like what you were saying before, but all of a sudden, sometimes, you know, you can introduce a way for them to understand that, you know, when you're looking at like animal tracks in the snow, like in this picture or in mud or, if you're down by the river and they like sometimes for them, you're allowing them an opportunity to see that animal or that bird or the, the, the trees or the landscape for the very first time. And they're actually getting to see what it really is, not what the idea in their head of what a bird is. And when you also presence the idea that like a, a you know, a kingfisher is a magical being, it's not just, Oh, it's a bird that eats minnows it's it's uh it's a it's an incredibly um interesting 
you know, world. It's a whole different world to enter into that and to hold that possibility. And so when we um, are sharing that with them, we're, we're kind of reinforcing their imaginative world. We're even, in many cases, we're even expanding that and maybe blowing their mind a little bit. And, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting you know, because it's like your world grows, but it also um, is is exciting because you're going to learn something really new. And and when you can feel excited about learning something new and you feel validated and all that, you're, you're hitting things that are really important to children and their inner growth, like on all cylinders. And it's, it's really, it's really substantial. Um, uh, so of course, one of the benefits of doing this is, is that, you know, again, the children actually become stakeholders in their experience. They are engaged. They've got focused attention. They're committed. They're into it. You know, like sometimes when I build shelters with kids, they're kind of like, oh, do we have to sleep in a shelter? Blah, blah, blah. And I know when that happens, they're probably not engaged. But on the other side of it, sometimes I have a group and if I've done my storytelling right, by Wednesday, they're begging me, when are we going to build a shelter? We want to sleep in it. We want to do it. Like they're so excited about the possibility of facing their fears and doing all this stuff that they're begging me. I, like I have to do hardly any building because they're just going to town on it. So that's really awesome. Uh, also participants, the, the campers or children, um, they will take more risks and be connected to their community. Um, they'll share more They'll, um, you know, sometimes you'll hear them like singing or laughing, having a really good time. They're asking for help. Um, it's a, those are really tremendous things that um, help them feel like they belong in that, in that culture, in that community. And as they start meeting those challenges, they're gaining trust in themselves. They're gaining confidence in their ability to handle themselves and handle their business. Um, you're helping them to open their awareness to what's actually going on and anticipate stuff separate from their parents or, um, you know, mentors or care, uh, caregivers. And they're also learning that even when there's a lot of uh, fear, what they can also take action to mitigate that, that they don't have to just sit in like anxiety. Uh, a lot of people, um, I, you know, it's very easy to see um, articles all the time now where people are like, children have all this anxiety. They have tons of anxiety. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. And if you don't feel like you can take any action, your anxiety just builds and builds and builds. But it's so healing to plant a garden or do something to bolster that inner foundation. And then when you do that, it helps you to go through the fear and get to the other side of it. And you're going to get to have all the good stuff that comes through going through that. Um, obviously, some people have depression and anxiety in a way that's not mitigated by that. So I don't want to make that as a blanket statement or say that, oh, you know, if you just tell some King Arthur myths or something in your program, none of the kids will be depressed anymore. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm implying. Um, but um, it's just really important for them to know that they can be empowered to take action in various ways. And uh, and that those are all like little lessons, mini lessons or mini treasures or gold nuggets that are hidden in a program that's really um, conscious of the fact that we're, we're trying to help them get those things. It really, to me, it doesn't really matter if a, if a kid memorizes the Latin name of all the trees or, you know, all, all the intellectual naturalist stuff. I don't really care about that so much. What I really care about is how do they feel good about themselves and all that. And if they learn some cool things, that's great too. All right. So how do we depart from the ordinary world? That's the title of this little page here. And for a lot of children, when they enter your program, whether sometimes it's my program, sometimes it's like I enter into their classroom. And when I walk into that classroom, I know that they are, I'm about to change their world, even though, you know, it's much easier if they come into my world, if they, 
if they drive down our long driveway, park their car or their bus, and then walk up the hill to our camp, they are definitely going to be aware that they are no longer in their ordinary world. But even if I show up in their classroom, there are things I can do to help them understand that I'm I'm holding the this other worldview and helping them to depart from business as usual. So one of the things that you can do uh, to help uh, facilitate that departure is to just do little things that are symbolic. So uh, you can give everyone a little, you know, a little whatever, a necklace or a bracelet that has a little symbol on it or or even just a piece of string. I mean, I know my wife does a lot of women's retreats and she'll be like, oh, I'll come back and I'll be like, oh, you have some red, you have red uh, yarn around one wrist. And then she also had a silver yarn around it. And then she was like, oh yeah, the silver is because I'm an elder and the red is because I've, you know, been in the red tent and, you know, I don't know. But she, they gave her all these things that are, you know, literally, you know, just a ball of yarn they got at Joanne Fabrics. But the reality is that for them, they were recognizing and infusing that with meaning, meaning that we are going to recognize you and do that. And my, you know, my wife would wear that till it fell off, for, you know, for a few weeks or whatever. Um, and because it, it reminded her of that special time. And so we can do things that will help them to understand that, you know, okay, in this next week or in these next five days or in these next two hours, we're going to, I'm going to show you something. I'm, we're going to go on, to, on a journey to discover um, these trees or birds or the power of some wilderness skill or the power of our group and our voices and our ability to do uh, challenging things. And so you can give them something that just goes, whoa, this is different. You know, so if everyone there gets a little stone, they have to reach into a bag and pull out a little stone. That's their special stone. That's going to, I don't know, maybe be something that they use at the end. If I, I don't usually do that because they always lose their stone and then they flip out and they're like, Rick, I left my stone. Oh, what's going to happen? I'm like, okay. Um, I remember one time that happened and one of my staff did something not very helpful. He went, well, I always find that if a stone is gone, it just didn't need to be with you anymore. It decided that it needed to do something else. And, and I could see that other kid just, their face just looked horrible. Like my stone didn't like me. And I was just like, not, not cool, man. Like not helpful. Um, but it may be true. I don't know. Uh, but the idea here is to think it out a little bit and decide what are things, what is something you can do symbolically for some of your lessons. And I want to maybe stop for a second and just say, you don't want your program to be entirely mythic based and have every single thing have to have meaning and all that. Like that'll be very, very tiring and it will also get old. So you want to, you'll feel when it feels right to do it versus not do it. And um, you'll, hopefully you'll be able to kind of get that sense that the kids will let you know if they if you go too far though, so it's not really a big deal if, if you do. Uh, another thing that I'll use is uh, storytelling. So it's really, really awesome to, if you're going to do say something on fire making, I'm, I, I don't know what a lot of your backgrounds are for things. Obviously, if you're working with like preschoolers, you're not going to be like working on bow drill skills or something. But whatever it is you're doing, it, there's usually a storybook somewhere that ha or someone who's done some writing um, where or you you have your own stories where you can share a story that helps set the mood and helps teach them about how to, you know, that that they're going to encounter that world. And it doesn't need to be you trying to get them on the bus. You're just letting the story transport them. So like for us, if we we had a camp that was all about um, the, the, the book Hatchet by Gary Paulson, I think his name is. And it was you know, something where every day we would read a little chapter from one of the books and then we would do like three of the, or two of the skills that he was sharing in the book. And most of those kids had read the book already. I think we we mailed copies of the book to them so they could read it ahead of time. So by the time those kids showed up for our camp for five days or seven days, they were pumped out of their minds to do all the stuff. And uh, yeah, 
I remember, I think it was on the, on the last day I said, okay, your final challenge. And I, I had this like skunk skin and I kind of like pretended that the skunk was alive in this bag. And I was like, okay. Cause I think one of the, one of the challenges for him was that he gets sprayed in the face by a skunk. And so I am wrestling with the skunk, the skunk skin, and it looks like it's alive. And the kids just were like, their eyes got so huge. And I was like, uh, I just ended up pulling it out and going, now this is a skunk, but it's a, it's just the skin. And anyway, but for a minute there, they didn't know if they were actually going to get the full challenge. Um, you can have a lot of fun with, with teenagers. So, or, you know, 11 year olds. Um, another thing I will mention is that you, you, some of the challenges that you do in your programs can either be, um, you know, chosen by the staff to say, okay, these people are ready to help us tend the fire or gather firewood or use a bow saw or, uh, you know, do something that kind of helps them learn and recognize that they've grown in a skill. And then other times it can be something where the children are self-selecting of whether they feel comfortable to jump into that challenge. So uh, you really you'll be able to feel out what feels right. Um, just for me to take a breath here again, I don't know if I'm hitting things that you guys are enjoying or anything, but hopefully this is helpful in some way to whatever you guys are doing. So these are um, things that I was thinking of when I think of initiations, like a, a lot of people think like, okay, you know, we've got to, we've got to have like, you know, 12 drummers in the background and we have to like, you know, cue a parade with a dragon coming in and we're going to like have this initiation rite of passage. And it's going to be this gigantic event um, that will change their world. But in reality, most of the time, it's these little things that are, that are big deals to them, but maybe not as powerful to us as uh as uh staff and a lot of times it's just like oh you know one minute this kid has never used a knife before and the next minute you know two days later they are unrestricted carving because they've mastered the safety uh, protocols and they they are doing things really safe and they're really careful and that's a big deal like that's a that's awesome climbing trees being able to add wood to the fire uh, or make a fire, um, learning how to handle, you know, like salamanders or frogs or turtles or whatever, or not handling them, whatever it is, that's a big deal. Uh, kids that are about to graduate and maybe not come back to the program because they're aging out, that's a big deal. That's um, something. Um, and even things like uh, students who are helping to contribute or do chores and you know sometimes it's just sort of seen as oh yeah do your chores clean up do this empty the garbage empty the recycling whatever but that's really that's an opportunity as well to say hey you know when you when you're doing the dishes or you're doing anything to help you're really giving to everyone you're helping to make things safe you're you're creating a really nice space for all of us to really enjoy and and other people will be doing it for you. And so ideally you want to do your best job and then you want people to appreciate you and vice versa. You want to appreciate others when they're doing it. And so like just learning how to give recognition for all of these things is really, really um, it's powerful for them. And uh, I, you know, again, you're, you're not limited to anything I'm talking about. Your imagination should be able to just go over all the things you do and then look and say, hey, I'm going to pick two or three things and see what happens if I can create this. Right. I, I think I already mentioned some of this here, but this says how you integrate. It's up to you. So again, it could be challenge based. We did a lot of challenges with kids that were in that um, children who were like 10, 11, 12, 13 to 17. So we would just always have some kind of a daily challenge. It might be that they have to make a fire. Sometimes I'm like, okay, it's Thursday. You all should know at least four trees. So I want a list of all the trees in the area I want 
correct identification. You know, you guys have 15 minutes. Everybody, let's go and see what they do. Sometimes they pass, sometimes they fail. And that's okay. It doesn't really matter, but I do lots of challenges. I'll do challenges for uh, cleaning. I'll be like, hey, you guys have 15 minutes to get this camp clean because it's a huge mess. And I don't feel like teaching if the place looks, you know, if there's 15 sweatshirts all over and water bottles and all that. And it's just really fun to like see them uh, jump in at some of them or drag their feet in some other ways. Um, and then do really special challenges that are like a real rite of passage. Um, so there's like larger events that you can do. We did a, a program called the fire vigil that um, was like something we would teach them how to make like one match fires and they would do it as a big group. They would do it as a smaller group. Then they would do it in pairs. And eventually they did it individually. And in each time they were doing it, making, making a fire, being real safe, building it, lighting it, letting it burn for a bit and then putting it out. And they did that. I'm probably most every child probably made like eight or nine fires in like three days. And then at the last one of the last days, they would we would blindfold them, take them out along this trail, and then they would each get dropped off in the as the sun was getting lower. And they had to make their fire by themselves where they couldn't see any of their friends and try to manage their fear that as it's getting darker and build their little campfire and then sit by it for 15 minutes or so. Uh, it, it takes like 45 minutes or so to do it. But to the kids, it's 45 minutes is like three hours. And invariably, you know, the coyotes that are live around us will start barking at some point, howling, or an owl will fly down and sit in a tree right over someone's head and, and hoot and scare them. Um, and, and, you know, to me, it's like the simplest thing. But for them, for somebody who was in fifth grade, who's never made a fire by themselves, um, it was a major, major deal. And then when they got back to the camp, the main campfire circle, when we all kind of came back, uh, they, you know, it's just really powerful. That That's a really intentional kind of a rite of passage for them. And yeah, there's invitation, activity-based, something where you're doing a challenge, but it's actually just within your program. So it's kind of hidden. And then there's story-based initiation where you're just sharing about a story of something. And it's not even necessarily reflected in your program, but you're just sharing stories of um, something that you know other students are going through. And sometimes that's really nice to actually be making like birch bark baskets or something. And as you're working on whatever it is, sharing a story about something that you know three or four of the children are dealing with. Um, so like I might, you know, if I know that somebody has lost a dog in their, you know, or a pet in their family, I might talk about, you know, what happened for us when, when we lost a pet and how, how did that, how did my daughter or my son take that? And what were some things that helped us? And, you know, so I'm not, I'm not being overt and obvious and saying, Hey, Susan, uh, what did you experience? Like, I don't put anybody on the spot. I just kind of start talking about that. And you can tell who's had that experience because they'll see like, you know, half of your group look at you and go, oh, you know, what's he talking about? This is important because this just happened to us. Um, so, you know, you can create an understanding there of that world um, that is, it doesn't have to necessarily be that you have them carve a wooden dog and put it around their necklace with a milkweed cordage or something. You can you can have it just be a story. And then other times your rite of passage can be nature-based. So sometimes you're just out in the woods and a thunderstorm comes and you got to figure out what are you going to do? And so that nature provides the challenge and then you get to figure it out and see how they do. So that's kind of fun. So as you go through whatever it is, there's also this element of when they return, um, how do you celebrate it? And in our culture, we tell, typically celebrate everything with food. You know, so it's like, oh, you graduated for such and such, boom, we're going to have a big dinner. Oh, this happened, we're going to do that. You know, food is a big piece. And that's 
that's pretty much common for cultures all over the world. But you don't have to focus on food. Uh, you know, I remember, I remember, um, I used to do a lot of rite of passage programs for boys um, in Baltimore, in a community in Baltimore, and we'd go every year. And, you know, we, we would sort of like have the parents give uh, something that was symbolic to them to um, help them mark that moment. And, you know, they were like, well, what should we get them? Should we spend, you know, a hundred dollars and get a, like a gold compass or, you know, to find their way or all this sort of thing. And I was like, you know, you could just, you could just print or write uh, one of your favorite poems and then roll it up like a scroll and put a little seal on it. And then that becomes something they can read that maybe it means something special. And you can give that to every boy if you want. In other words, it doesn't, it doesn't, so things can be imbued with meaning that don't have to have a high monetary value, but they have a, a high return um, on that. Um, you know, some moms would bring like a rose and give a rose to each of the boys, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like you're, you're not limited to, you know, just going like, all right, we got to go to the Cheesecake Factory and be there with a thousand other people. Um, but you can, you can you can create opportunities and then share something meaningful with that person without making it awkward uh you know like like it's it, it, i i'm really sensitive to when something is forced when when somebody is sitting there and they're just like all right we're sitting here what does rick want me to say okay i love the program you guys are great and i'm like okay yeah i'm not really fishing for compliments what i really want to know is was anything touching you did it did you feel something valuable or important and that's that's just me because i i know a lot of kids by the time they get to be te older teenagers they've been in a lot of these circles and they know the drill the drill is the instructors just want to have some ego stroked and so they know what to say to like get them off their back but it's not really authentic Uh, one of the things we do in our programs is to um, take some slate from uh, some of the local uh, lake stones um, and we um, we have them drill a hole using a little pump drill and then they take the the another stick or a file or something and then they make they make these really cool carvings. This was a class that I, we did and it was really fun. They were, they were, I think they were here for a weekend and then the last day, we had them all make a, a symbol that they could wear around their neck that remember that that they liked about the program. And so, you know, kids were making a key and they have hearts and people were making patterns and stars and spirals and everything. And it was just really fun uh, opportunity for them to just explore that world and, you know, break a lot of stones as they pounded them and stuff like that. Um, but just an example you could you could also do this on wooden pendants, or you could also do this on uh, you know birch bark, or or even just some really nice handmade paper or something. All right, yeah. So anyway, it's what time is it, man? It's almost eight o'clock already. So this is kind of my presentation, but I also know that I could probably go in a lot of other directions with this. So I'm just curious as to is there anything that this, you know, kind of inspires or awakens something in you or makes you, did you think about anything? I mean, again, I'm not looking for compliments, but more like thinking um, how you, you know, is there on a scale of one to 10, is it useful, semi-useful, um, you know, slightly better than, you know, streaming Netflix in the background, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, no, I, I found it useful. I think um, I think there's a lot that, you know, intentionality that we can put into our practices. I work mostly with teachers now, a teacher of teachers, but um, I have worked with, uh, I still work with preschoolers and I get to help with a, a fifth grade Forest Friday kind of program. And I just think that whole idea of initiations and really thinking about um you know, the stories that we share with children and how we help them to make meaning is so important. And so 
um, that's what you know sort of attracted me to take take this session tonight and just to kind of hear your perspective on it. Um, so I think it was good. And I think thinking about those sort of rites of passages that just don't really necessarily happen in our culture, except for maybe birthday celebrations or graduations or things like that. But, you know, sort of thinking about how to um, build those into some of the work that I do with children, but then also thinking about how many of the adults that I work with never have those opportunities for the meaningful kinds of initiations or, um, you know, they're not going home from anywhere with the red or silver, you know, <laughs> string right. around their, their, um, I mean, I've been a part of that, uh, myself and I feel like, um, it's just, you know, kind of time to, to build those deeper connections. So, so I found it helpful. Good. That's great. Yeah. I was going to say that, um, you know, again, I, I like to emphasize, I I'm usually emphasizing this for children, but adults that you make a really good point because adults don't, um, uh, many times they have never had anyone recognizing them the same way. And it can be really powerful for them, for people to see what they're going through when they are going to be stepping into a classroom or, you know, in the field and mm -hmm. doing that work. And, to be able to say, you're going to be in the trade, you're going to be in there with a bunch of kids and stuff's going to happen. You're not going to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like doing the best that you can. And sometimes it's going to go sideways or whatever. And what can you do? You know, at that point, mm -hmm. yeah, you're in the underworld and you're going to have to find tools, find mentors. And, you know, you're going to have to find a magic sword and take care of business or whatever. Yeah. And I think that yeah. educators that I work with, um, they, I think it's important that they remember how to play and ha how to uh, be in that same space of, you know, in the mind of the child. And mm -hmm. so I think kind of creating that space for them is really important because I feel like a lot of the professional development um, that we do is so hyper-focused in specific areas like, you know, trauma-informed or, you know, classroom management or whatever it is, behavioral things. But it's like, oh, actually, if we shift our practices and really ground ourselves in some of these outdoor concepts, a lot of those things, you know, you're coming at it from a very different, a different yeah. perspective. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, and I, I wanted to just hear a little bit more about your forest box um, for kids, the subscription box that you mentioned. I hadn't heard of that before. So is that like a monthly kind of thing that's delivered? Uh, yeah, actually, it's a, um, let me see if I have one in my, I have one in here, hold on. All right. Yeah, so anyway, it's a, it's just a box that has uh, called the forest box. Yeah, Octavio's got one too. And it basically has, I think, the, uh, you know, it, it'll have a different theme every month. So I have one, one that I just did was uh, first aid uh, recently. And it had first aid, you know, had a big, a nice first aid kit for a child, um, for a family or for anyone going on a hike. And then it also had like a forest uh, protectors journal. So it kind of talked about you know, what does it mean to take care of each other? And what, you know, what can you learn about your first day? You know, how many times have you actually seen anybody get hurt? And then how did they get helped? And, um, you know, adding a lot of stories to that. And then it had, I'm trying to remember what it had. I think we had um, something in there with like willow tongs and a, and a little coal burning. You Ricardo, know. I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I would like to you're going to jump I'll in, right? Commend your work. And I have it right here. And it's it's been phenomenal. I I, I do, I've done wilderness skills. I was a wilderness skills instructor. Uh, aside from the um, the work I do in the public school. And I homeschool my kids. And one thing that I know as an educator, your kids don't always want to listen to you. Now, so I never wanted to force any kind of skills. And it's been authentic and fun. And what I love about Ricardo's kits, they come in and it's like a treasure and they're excited to open it. And he's phenomenal. Your skills, Ricardo, it's, it's why I came here tonight and why I always want to hear what you present. Um, he has uh, 
They come like booklets, like the willow tongs and a coal burning bowls and natural fiber skills, stone pendants, fire starter skills, secrets of the weather, natural skills journal. Um, and they reach kids in so many levels on the academic level, um, as a naturalist taking, doing these journals, uh, the physical skills. Um, and it's not something like you just do once and you're done. You can continue to go back to that and, and refine the skills. And he even has like these audio stories that are connected with the skills. Um, it's, it's really like we we've had it for about five months now or five, five months. And, uh, I'm so excited at every every month what comes in and how we will have this for a long time and can continue to learn from it. So I think it's I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And I'm I'm also thinking how I can help get it in, in other people's hands because it's it's a treasure. All right. Awesome. I'm glad I'm recording yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, what a testimonial. Clip that know, out and ship it to <laughs> <Yeah>. the world. <laughs> I have to run, but I um I really appreciate it. Great to meet you. Uh and I look forward. I'm gonna I found it I found the website, so I uh, okay. I'm definitely gonna gonna consider that. Absolutely. Um, and it was yeah. nice to it was nice to hear you. You're you're so being in the education field, it seems like you're you're an ally in that yes. way. So I'd love <laughs> to hear how someone's also looking how to get um skills into a more uh, conventional setting, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that's actually really my, I, I really feel drawn to that. And I'm, um, I teach higher ed and I am embedding it into my just regular class, you know, into my community college courses. And I also teach for Castleton University here in Vermont. And, um, but for the community college next, it's taken like more than a year, but I uh, got a nature-based approaches course added to the course, uh, what do they call it? Like the register. And so right. next fall, um, I'll be teaching a section of that. And I'm super excited because I, I know there's, that's the leverage point. I feel like, um, you know, the work that we do in the forest is really important, but the work that we do to get to the people who are decision makers is just, yeah. it's really yes. critical. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Well, stay, please stay in touch. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to talk more about that, connect more. So if you have any, if you're inspired to give me a call anytime or whatever, let me know. I'm happy to. Yeah. Chat. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I, I will. And it's, it's good to know <clears throat> that you're, you know, you're in upstate New York, so it's not, it's not too, not too far either. Too far away. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm over in the Northeast kingdom of Vermont. So like just to get from here to Burlington is about two hours, but I don't know from Burlington to where you are, how far that is. Um, but oh, yeah, I've been there before. Yeah. It's maybe like three and a half hours, maybe. I don't know. It's okay. hard to say. It's not too yeah. bad. I could just imagine at some point I would imagine there could be a day uh, coming out and doing a day long class, you know, teaching four or five different cool things, uh, free yeah. educators or, you know, doing a conference or something. So, yeah. 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 We have a, um, we have a PLC, um, because I do work in a public school um, and, you know, we were meeting today and we're just like, you know, there's like a clutch of us who, this is our approach. This is what we, we do, but it's like, how do we influence our colleagues? Because it's disjointed when, you know, they get a lot of it in preschool, they get a little bit in kindergarten, not, so, not much at all, you know, in first grade, and then a lot of it in second grade. And so it's kind of like, how do we instead have a thread um, that right. comes a little bit more, you know, through all of it. But I am, um, yeah, I will, um, I'm going to drop a link into the chat that is my contact information. Um, okay, great. And yeah, so yeah. I got to run though, but thanks right. so much. Nice to meet both of you. Take all right, care of yourself. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh, Bye. All right, cool. This is great. Well, uh, yeah, man, it's so great to see you look great. You guys, uh, thanks so much for sharing about the box too. I, I, I haven't actually, I've only really gotten feedback from like maybe seven or eight people out of like, you know, a hundred. Uh, a lot of times I'll say, hey, does anybody want to give any feedback? And people will just go, oh, my daughter loves it. It's really great. That's it. You know what I'm just like, really? <laughs> and then I realized like parents are really busy. So I was like, yeah, I understand. Yeah, no, and really I've been I've been like because 
we use it for for our kids, but we're learning from it. And even no matter you know, no matter how many years I, I I've done what I do, like I I learn from it. We learn from each other. That's the way. And so yeah, yeah I couldn't give a high enough recommendation. I've been wanting to put a plug social media wise. I have kids of the pictures working and one of the key right. things is um they just begun uh getting schedules dialed down and so they marked uh in their schedule forest box time. Oh nice. So, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, it's 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 really amazing, Ricardo. What what That's you good. have stuff. Yeah. That's good. I'm I I I've been trying to figure out what link um you know like who are who is the population that would really thrive with it because that's you know that's i've this has only been about a year and a half that i've been doing this so i'm hoping to make it better and then also trying to figure out um how to how to kind of work it so to speak so that i i'm going to be advertising it to the people that really will love it because there are some people that think it's one thing and then they get a couple boxes and they're like yeah this isn't what i imagined um, some people, hmm. they get a box, it's more like toys and, you know, cliff bars and, you know, kind of gl glittery things that will just keep a kid occupied for a little while. And this is a little different. So I'm trying to make sure that I position it so that it will really find the right people. So this is really helpful because your kids are homeschooled and, um, you know, and I mean, obviously they're, they're primed by all the things you've done with them for years and years. So, uh, but I, do, I have heard from other homeschoolers who say that their their kids really love it. So that makes me happy. Yeah, and what, where I, you know, I where I could see um, uh, another market for it, I guess, is um, like working in the public schools. Uh, there are studies, there are plant studies, garden studies, um, simple right. machines, right? Like, mm -hmm. so, I could see if if this had like we work with create to uh, objectives, and if you just put objective nine A, yeah, uh, the stories, you know that there's like <laughs> that just by having that it it's right into into the uh, you know my school in that way, and so like with this like this presentation did. Um, is geared, it sounds like, towards people who are um, in running their own programs in some way or contemplating. And where I'm inspired and what I'm extracting is how, how to bring this into a, a school setting. Like that, that's yeah. where I'm at on the journey. And it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge because um, I want a fire pit, right? But there's right. this safety issue around our curriculum that's like i get it and you know you'll get dock points because you're you don't have soft cushions at the bottom of your slides and stuff right right so, yeah and and i get it and i'm just really looking for a way to um have people uh really uh appreciate nature in a more uh dynamic way and it, it's happening just by going out there and showing kids plants and the kids ran and screamed and got me because two geese were walking in the field and they knew I was the guy that would like really appreciate that. Right. Oh, um, yeah. So, so, and, and the, the, what I appreciate is your, your experience, Ricardo and, and your words. Like I, I could do, I, I could put together a presentation, but uh, I like hearing you. I like I like your words. I like hearing you, it's man. It's more eloquent. It's more eloquent. Well, I'll just I'll yeah I'll co-sign. I can co-sign you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you everything you're saying is really right on, and that's to me that's the real work of what we need to do. What the world needs right now for kids is we need to figure out how do we translate things. You know, a lot of my box stuff in there, I I thought about a lot of it because I was like, well, I can't really. I would love it if like my first box included a knife and then kids could carve their own willow tongs. You know what I mean? But right. Can't right. because kids don't get to do that too much. You know, like that I, there's too many variations mm. of parents that would be like, Oh, uh, my kids stab themselves with the knife. And then so, right. so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to eliminate that. But for kids that do know how to carve, they could see how to do it and hopefully figure it out. And 
But, you know, when I would go into a school, I would go into a school like eight times and I had to create eight different activities that were school friendly and figure out what those are and then and then present those in a two hour period for after school programs. And it was really it was challenging because there's a lot of cool things that we could do that involve things that are not allowed. And then you're kind of like, uh oh, well, I guess I can't do anything. And but there are there are really a ton of different uh, things. So I'm I'm trying to see how to grow that because if we can if we can just provide a vessel for teachers and educators and administrators to kind of get behind. And especially if we keep talking about the benefits, if we can just keep talking about those benefits of why we want to do it, you know, for mental health, anxiety, depression, all these things that parents and right. kids and everybody is struggling with. And we say, Hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, solve four things by doing this one thing three times a week, you know, or whatever. I, I think we'll get some people to bite on it. And I hopefully we can kind of continue to craft it. And over a, a couple of years, maybe we can come up with some things that are, you know, at least something that something better than nothing, I guess. So, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm excited about with this whole forest educator initiative. Cause I want, I really want to interview not just people that are doing bushcraft and not just people that are just doing forest schools or, you know, kind of like, you know, trackers or whatever, but I really want to meet people who are actually working in school systems where that, you know, that's really where the 60 million kids are. They're in those public yeah, schools. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I like not, yeah, yeah. In, in my program, I had, um, you no know, eight kids, right. Over, over the years, yeah. right. They pop in and out. Um, they, they age out in a homeschool setting for early child, as soon as uh, they can go to school for free, some parents are like, all right, I'm sending them there. So I went from eight to having like 150 in my role, right? Yeah. 160. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's uh, good though. I mean, it, and it, and then you kind of see the, what's, what is, what the actual monumental task is. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do is to just keep easing into that and then supporting those teachers. Because I read a, I read a report recently that said, uh, something like 96% of teachers who engage nature in a, in their classroom find, you know, at least three metrics where their kids are doing better than their classes where kids aren't getting that. Um, and so they were just saying like, it is across the board, highly beneficial for a lot of reasons. And then they said also something like 87% of teachers who are trying to get their kids out don't feel prepared. Like they don't feel confident in their skills. They don't really quite know what they're doing. And so they want to do it, but they have a lot of internal, you know, pressure to maybe be better than they are or whatever. So um, giving them confidence, giving them training and stuff is really key. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we got our work cut out for, cut out for us, but hey. We yeah. Hey man. Well, well this somewhere. was, this is another step. Yeah, it's an it's another step. So thank you, thank you, Ricardo, and uh, yeah, uh, I'll look forward to um. I'll do another one of these. Next. I'll do yeah. another one of these too. And I know if um, I'm doing uh this forest educator online training, and uh, I can probably send you the links to anything that I'm doing on there because I have like a page for each of the sessions, and I can mm -hmm. just sort of give you some of the um res resources that I've got there. And then I'm doing another session, I think sometime in June, which is I, I'm going to have the class be in the evening instead of in the middle of the day. And hopefully, you know, you can come in and weigh, weigh in or anything you want to do. Um, but we can also just keep doing it. I'm going to try to do some of these, uh, you know, webinar type experiences as well and see if I can keep. I wonder, Ricardo, if... Um... Yeah, um, you know, like your your TED talk. Um, I wonder if you would do a a version of that 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 would resonate towards um, public school educators in that way. Like, um, so like a, a and I would uh, I could send a link out to like my the the child study team the anyone connected to who I'm working with 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 kids in yeah. that way and, and see who else of the public might be 
interested in um, hearing you uh, talk about the the pr pretty much given the same presentation, right? Yeah, yeah, but with being able to connect with you. Okay. Yeah, if, if you're that, that, that would be awesome. Yeah, and it I think it would resonate more with um, the the anyone who's like in education, right? Because not uh, and from there might inspire um, like more of adding uh, nature based anything into into the classroom. Right. Right. Okay. Well, let's let's maybe we'll just get a chance to chat about it. I know there's like a. Do you guys have like a school uh, Easter break or something or spring break coming up? Yeah. Yeah. We have a spring break coming up um, after next week. Okay. Well, if you ever feel like you want to just chat about that or want to just jot me an email, we could actually um, talk about it and then, um, you know, kick it around and then maybe get together or talk about it and uh, just see if we can flesh something out and then I can hit, kick some drafts around because it definitely takes that TED talk took a long time to do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 